Hello and welcome to the Irish Pagan School YouTube channel. This is myself, Laura O'Brien, and I'm here to clear up some confusion that people have around Queen Maeve, the Morrigan, and the English fairy Queen Mab. Now, these are all very, very different entities, deities. Do you know what? Let's throw in the uh, the Morgan Le Fay stuff as well from um, English, possibly Welsh. I'm not very familiar on that. But I'm just going to start very, very clearly by saying both the English Mab and the Morgan Le Fay entity character are not anything to do with Maeve or the Morrigan from an Irish tradition. They're just not. There's no association there. There is possibly with the English fairy queen Mab, there is maybe some colonial confusion way back when. I don't know the origins again of the entities and figures on the British Isles, but I do know for a fact that they are not connected to ours in any form of verifiable uh, documentation that we have available to us today. So that leaves us with Queen Maeve and the Morrigan. Now, Queen Maeve is the let's call it pseudo historical, just to be very, very clear and very accurate. What we absolutely know is that in Irish prehistory, there was a figure entity character called Maeve. And you will see that spelled variously. It's M-E-D-B. Usually people constantly mix up the B and the D. Please don't do that. Um, and that is often anglicized to, and there are multiple variations in, in Irish language, depending on where in our chronological history of the Irish language, you happen to be pulling this name from, or your sources or your references from. So what we have is currently an anglicization then of all of these spellings, all of these uh, versions of the name Maeve into the modern M-A-E-V-E, -E, or again, there's variations of that spelling as well. So Maeve is a figure who has links to both Tara, um, which may or may not be the same being, entity, um, that is Maeve Lecharg, and over then to Krukon, which is the the best known Queen Maeve of Kurokan, and that is Rathcrohan in modern County Roscommon. There are associations with, as far as I know, every province except for Munster. So there's Ulster associations in that she had a previous relationship with Conor McNassa, the king of Ulster. She, as I said, she would have um, Leinster. It's, it's not really fair. It's, it's modern Leinster now, but I suppose technically it would have been me or the middle province back in the day. So that would be Tara. So Leinster is may or may not be accurate as an association. Um, and then Munster, I, I haven't really got a lot of or any lore coming to mind anyway about um, Maeve in Munster down in the south of Ireland. Uh, where there is a huge amount, the most amount, uh, and the most solid evidence of her in Connacht in the Western province. So Rathcrohan is the heart and the royal epicenter of Connacht, of the Western province. And again, modern day Roscommon. Uh, Tulsk would be the nearest village there, T-U-L-S-K. And the Rathcrohan complex is vast and sprawling and incredibly ancient, as in the, well, previously, the earliest known human activity um, date ranges that we had would have also taken place at Rathcrohan, so they would have been on par. Now, since uh, my days at Rathcrohan, there have actually been um, 
not finds, um, archaeological finds, because they were found in probably the 70s, the 80s, I think. Um, but there were bones which were examined or re-examined in a modern context, first by Marion Dowd, which was, this is a little bit of a tangent, but you know, maybe it's interesting for people. First by Marion Dowd, which was um, the Alice and Gwendolyn cave bones and that was bare bones which had evidence of butchery on them and that put us at around I think around 10,500 BCE before common era and then just last year 2021 as I record this it's 2022 so in 2021 there was a find in the mammoth cave Again, it was a re-examination and I'm really blanking on the name of the person who has been working on this. So apologies for that. Um, it was a female PhD student, I believe, um, or I could have that wrong. So again, apologies for that. But anyway, she was doing this work um, on re-examining some finds and there was a reindeer bone that was found in the mammoth cave which is so called because there were multiple mammoth finds as well um which is near Donnerail in county cork and that there was evidence of butchery on the reindeer bone and that has been dated to i have 33000 bce which would be like pre-paleolithic pre-ice age very exciting um it was either 33,000 years ago or 33,000 BCE so I mean you know we could be a couple of thousand years off there on the actual date so again apologies for that I did look at it recently but it's gone out of my brain this morning so that is what I have anyway before those discoveries were made Maeve would have ruled over this province of Connacht from Rathcrohan and within that central location of Rathcrohan it was very clear there was a Mesolithic evidence of human activity um, which would be eight nine thousand years ago and um, so that would be a hunter-gatherer um, nomadic kind of a lifestyle going on in the plains of uh, Connacht or Machara Connacht as it used to be called and um, and then certainly then there was ritual activity from the Neolithic. So there was um, a court kern found, Clug and the Gorp it's called, the stones of the corpse. Um, so it looks like a row of orthostats or standing stones. And that was dated to the Neolithic. Um, it's much degraded now, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, but you can still see, and it is obvious upon archaeological examination, what, uh, what that was. And then there's probable remains of a Neolithic house site not far from that as well. So, which is um, near the mucklocks, actually, which are raised earthen. Anyway, all of this to say that Rathcrohan has been a very important place through human history and activity on this island. So apologies for the tangent. Um, archaeology is something of a passion of mine, as well as history, obviously. And um, I, do, I do go off on one sometimes, especially around Rathcrohan, where I was the manager for uh, many years and the uh, and have, have served as a tour guide there for a very long time as well. So anyway, Queen Maeve is based there. Now, if you just do a random Google of Queen Maeve on the internet, you will find her associated to Maeve's cairn in Sligo, which is a court cairn, which is on top of a mountain. Now, unfortunately, the date for that would be much earlier than Maeve is supposed to have existed, which would be around the Iron Age in Ireland. So from 4500 BCE before Common Era to about four say 400 common era or AD. Um, so that would be the date range in Ireland for the Iron Age, where the cycle of tales that May features most strongly in, which would be the Ulster cycle, named for the um, patriarchy, let's call it, because Maeve actually features 
just as strongly, if not more strongly than many of the figures from the Ulster cycle. Surely it should be the Connacht cycle. But anyway, apart from that, um, the the Ulster cycle features Maeve very, very strongly. So if she existed in this pseudo historical timeline, obviously this is pre records, pre written record. Um, we didn't start uh, apart from Ohm. There's other videos on the Ohm here on this channel. Um, apart from Ohm, we haven't um, we haven't been writing things down until the Christian monasteries began and the monks started their scribing of the oral, the native oral tradition, which they recorded quite faithfully, uh, for the most part, for the vast majority of of what we have. So we are very lucky to have that written record of these very early and uh, prehistoric tales. So that is how we have a record of Queen Maeve. Um, there are definitely theories of Maeve as a, um, as a sovereign goddess. And this is something that my own personal experience, uh, UPG, unverified personal gnosis, but I'm not sure if it's completely unverified because uh, scholars, very well respected Rathcrohan scholars, such as John Waddell, who was based over in NUI Galway, the National University of Ireland in Galway, um, would probably uh, share this opinion or theory that uh, Maeve was originally a sovereignty goddess. Now, I have explored Maeve quite extensively and thoroughly in my book, Queen Maeve, which I'll link below, I suppose, uh, below the video. And um, or you can, you know, go on to the evil empire of Amazon and uh, you will absolutely find type in my name and you will find all of my books there. Uh, there are seven or eight, I can't remember, in in print currently. Um, six in print, maybe. I think I've published about eight. Um, so Queen Maeve, uh, history, practice no I can't remember the full title anyway it'll be down below so it is explored very thoroughly in that book if you want to find out more about Queen Maeve and of course we have classes at the Irish Pagan School if you'd like to go and take some of those as well on Queen Maeve now she is very firmly based in Rathcrohan that is where her living situation was that is where she held court that is where the Tonbo Coolnia, the cattle raid of Cooley, Ireland's epic adventure tale started and finished as it set out, as they set out across the island and, you know, looped around Ulster, whatever Ulster. But OK, Ulster is great. I'm just Connacht. I'm very Connacht focused in case anybody wasn't aware of that already. Although I do live in Munster now, so, you know, loyalties are shifting maybe, but I think Rathcrohan will always have my heart and my soul. So, um, so please forgive my bias in that regard. So um, all of that happened. And probably if Maeve is buried anywhere, it would be at Rathcrohan. But there is an interesting Bronze and Iron Age burial tradition of actually splitting up body parts. So I think the idea of Maeve being buried standing up in Sligo facing, you know, on, on the board or, or the boundary. I think probably maybe if there's any truth to that, Sligo got a part of her, but the heart of her is, is at Rathcrohan where she uh, lived and ruled. And that is what makes the most sense to me. Obviously, we don't have any proof for this, but I am basing it on extensive study and experience both uh, personally and spiritually and much much conversation with eminent scholars on the topic so the morrigan then is a goddess i have i have other videos on this channel on the morrigan i have so many blog posts on my laura o'brien.ie website I have multiple classes at the Irish Pagan School, including, I believe, a free one that's available currently. So if you check the links to the free classes below, you can have a look and see what is currently going free at the Irish Pagan School. If you want to dip a toe in the water, um, you're bound to find a topic that interests you anyway. I mean, if you're watching this video, obviously this stuff is of interest to you. 
the Morrigan is the goddess that I have devoted my life to effectively for the last 20 years. And um, I have been, that was my primary deity relationship, is my primary de deity relationship, even though I do work with Maeve and Mononon and the Dagda Sidles is way into my life on occasion. Um, because my partner is a priest of the Dagda. So I am a priest of the Morrigan and um, the, the Morrigan would have very strong connections also to Rathcrohan. So that is where a Maeve and the Morrigan crossover comes in, as well as in, say, the Tonvo Coolnia would be the most obvious example. Again, the Cattle Raid of Cooley. And that is... And if you want to look up that, just search T-A-I-N or T-A-F-A-D-A-I-N and you will you will absolutely find. There are multiple tawns, but that is the most famous. Tawn means raid, uh, cattle raid particularly. So we have um, much evidence of the Morrigan through our literature, through our lore. Again, in multiple stories, apologies if you can hear the machines going. I don't know if that's coming through, but we have a, it's laundry day here at IPS HQ. Every day is laundry day, honestly, with uh, two teens, well, young adults and two adults in a household and a, an elderly dog. Every day is laundry day, but um, they happen to be going currently. I try and usually time my videos around the laundry but uh, that just wasn't possible today. So apologies if you can hear that in the background. Um, so yeah, the Morrigan would have very strong basis with and crossover, I suppose, with Maeve. Qualify that now in just one second, but there are connection points in that they are both associated with the same landscape, the same sacred sites, the Morrigan's cave, which is Uv Nagach, or the Cave of the Cats, is, or Oenigat, which it's anglicized to, um, which is uh, in within the Rathcrohan complex in County Roscommon. And there are various other um, geographical connections, I suppose, that where they both would have shown up at the same sites, basically. And they both show up in uh, the same story then through the tawn. I've been racking my brain actually, just as I'm saying it here, I'm pretty sure that there's no direct interaction in the tawn between Maeve and the Morrigan. Now my memory could be letting me down there. If there is, it is relatively insignificant in that it doesn't form a large part of either of their stories, or it could be that um, one of the Morrigan sisters uh, has a, a brief interaction with Maeve at some point. So, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if you if you know of an example within the town where any of Namorinia, uh, plural, or, um, or the Morrigan herself crosses over with Maeve directly in the text, um, do let me know because um, I, I am struggling to find a memory of that happening. And yes, and yet we have constant, consistent misunderstandings within neo-paganism or contemporary paganism of the Morrigan and Queen Maeve either being the same entity or Maeve being one of the Morrigan sisters or aspects or them being enemies is another one I've heard and various other piles of shite and um, to be honest none of that is true none of it is accurate and um, none of us ties in with uh, personally with my lived experience my extensive and in-depth lived experiences with both of those entities they are colleagues as far as I can tell um, they are both concerned with sovereignty which is rooted in Rathcrohan or Krohkan um, but they tend to look at different kind of aspects or elements of sovereignty or deal with different uh, aspects or elements of sovereignty and again 
take the classes, read the blog posts, read the book, you know, just you really need to kind of take all of these entities, all of these deities as their own beings and stop fucking crossing them over with not just with each other within our own traditions, but also with completely unrelated entities such as Mab, the fairy queen in England, or Morgan Le Fay. Now, I know that there is a, a, a quite probably still quite popular um, book on or dealing with the Morrigan by an American author that does directly correlate Morgan Le Fay with, um, and I believe that there may have been, an, there, there is another one by um, English authors many years ago, which is definitely less popular, sorry, <clears throat> um, now. And they correlated the Morgan with everybody. They were just lumping it all in together. So um, none of that is accurate. And I don't know how those authors feel about it now, but it's it's simply just not true. Again, both from my scholarly research and extensive understanding of the materials and the source material, the lore for both of those deities or entities. And also from my own personal experience of living at Cruacon and working at Cruacon for many, many years and um, having personal devotional relationships and working relationships with both of them individually. So I hope that that has cleared up some things for some people. Um, again, check out the free classes below in the link below for the Irish Pagan School. That is the irishpaganschool.com. And there is so, so much material up there with, from myself, from my partner, John, from our our team um, at this point, quite a quite a wide ranging team of uh, teachers that teach on native materials uh, to Ireland. So you are getting consistently getting the best information that is available. And of course, check out our books and blogs and all that good stuff as well. If you want to, you know, expand your knowledge and actually develop your own devotional relationships or working relationships with these entities, beings, deities, gods, goddesses, all that stuff. Okay, so slongerful and I will see you in the next video.